We are attendees coming in now. So attendees are filing in now and um, whenever you want to start, go right ahead, President Norwood. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Welcome to the Milpitas Unified School District Special Board of Education meeting agenda, March 30th, 2021. Hybrid virtual uh, Milpitas Unified School District located at 1331 East Calaveras Boulevard. You may register for the Zoom uh, per the instructions that are available. And also, you have the ability to watch the uh, meeting via YouTube. My name is Chris Norwood. I'm the board president. At this time, we appreciate your attendance and participation and involvement in our education proceedings, which are cu currently being conducted virtually in pursuant of executive orders in 25-20 and N29-20 issued by Governor Gavin, Gavin Newsom. If you would like to address the board on any item on the agenda or a subject that does not appear on a specific agenda, please join us via Zoom, click the raise your hand button and you will be called upon in order. Please keep your hand raised until you're called upon. When it is your turn, please state your name, address, and if you have students in the district before you make your public comments. Uh, thank you, Scott, for putting that up on the screen. If you want to share that with the audience. Yep, for public comments, we're trying to make it uh, as easy as possible for everybody in this virtual world we're in. So number one, you register on Zoom, which everybody who's on here via Zoom has already done. We also are streaming live to YouTube. But if you are watching on YouTube and you would like to make a comment, we need you to come over to the Zoom side and... Uh, um, and sign up that way so you can. Uh, once you do that, simply click the raise your hand button. We will see, you will see the hand icon and you just click that and that indicates to us that you um, are wanting to make a public comment. Then you simply wait to be called upon. We will call the names in order they are received. Then we will enable your audio and you will just have to unmute yourself. You'll have two minutes to speak. Um, and then we just ask just to be patient the board president will call on you for public comment at the right time. Thank you everybody for being here today. Thank you, Scott. Um, in, in, continuing, in continuing with that, uh, those wishing to speak on a specific item on the agenda, as Scott had mentioned, will be called upon the appropriate time. One public comment per person is allowed for each item. Our communication specialist will unmute the speakers in turn. Speakers will be notified shortly before they are called to speak. Persons who do not respond when prompted uh, may forfeit their comment for that item, but we will do the best that we can to allow you to, uh, to communicate. Members of the public, again, may address, any, uh, may address the board on any subject, not on tonight's agenda. However, provisions of the Brown Act, Government Code 54954.2a and .3 preclude any action. As an unagendized item, no response is required from the board or district staff, and no action can be taken. However, the board may instruct the superintendent to agendize the item for a future meeting. Please note that the law prohibits members of the board in commenting or engaging in discussion during the public comment portion of the agenda, except when seeking clarification on a point made by the speaker. The board may, however, instruct the superintendent to look into that matter or place it on a future agenda. Thank you for your participation in the civic engagement. Individuals who require special accommodations should contact the superintendent's office at least two business days before the meeting date, all disclosable, all disclosable public records related to an agenda item for discussion in open session of a regular meeting of the Board, and of board of Education and distributed to the majority of all the board members less than 72 hours available to that meeting shall be made available to the public inspection at the same time in the writing is distributed to all of the majority of the board members. Any such writings will be made available for public inspection, inspection during business hours of the superintendent at, in the superintendent's office, building 100, 1331 East Calaveras Boulevard between the hours of eight and 5 a.m. This meeting as mentioned earlier is being broadcast via Zoom and on YouTube and is being recorded. All recordings are posted on our district website. If you have any safety related concerns regarding your likeness or comments being broadcast or recorded, please contact the superintendent's office prior to the meeting. Closed captioning is available via Zoom 
click on the closed captioning icon, and then the live transcript, transcript will appear on your screen. At this time, I would like to call the meeting to order. Uh, Board President Norwood here, Board Vice President Kelly Yip Chuan. Here. Board Clerk Han Lian. Here. Board Member Michael Sai. Here. Board Member Min No. Here. Um, our, this evening, I do not believe that we're going to have our student board reps, Amy Stanley or Effie Mathales. Amy's here. Oh, hi, Amy. Board Member Amy. Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. Um, at this time, we're on item three, review and approve the special meeting agenda. Is there a motion? Motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion, the second roll call. Board member Yip, Board Vice President Yip Chuan. Here, yes. Board Clerk Lian. Yes. Board member Sai. Abstain. Board member No. Yes. Or member Norwood. Yes. At this time, uh, please rise for the flag salute. I will lead us in the flag salute. Oh, no, excuse me. Board rep, uh, student board rep, Amy Stanley, please lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Amy, are you there? Okay, I'll do it. Ready? Oh, sorry, I'm here. I can okay. do it. Could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Yes, I pledge allegiance to the flag yeah. of the United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, yeah. one nation, under yeah. God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty. with liberty and justice yeah. for all. Thank you. Scott, are there any comments from the public? Uh, we have one hand raised at this time. Let me see what, we, what it is. Yes, uh, Jacqueline Romero has her hand raised. Uh, Jacqueline, we're gonna enable your audio and then you'll have two minutes to speak. Go right ahead. Good evening, School Board of Trustees and Superintendent Cheryl Jordan. Thank you for the time. Tonight, I represent the students that are struggling in silence. It has become apparent to our community that MUSD is actively committing a violation against our youth. Choosing who can return to school first is discrimination. Where is the equality that is provided in our constitution? Equality should be the first priority for all MUSD students. The email, sorry, the email sent to high school parents clearly states the plan of action to only allow freshmen and students with three or more Fs. The option to return is then given to those that want to return. This is a half-hearted attempt to get the kids back on campus for the state's money grab. Our schools should not reopen until all students can return. We would like transparency on how many parents actually replied to the survey. The reports that you showed in one of the meetings showed over 500 students at the high school have been identified as failing or not participating. That is of concern. But what about the struggling students that haven't been identified? What about them? Some students will thrive with online learning because they'll thrive in any environment. Some students will survive and some won't make it. I would hope that you would want everybody to thrive. The question is, when will equality be a priority? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, we have no more hands raised at this time, President Norwood. Repeat, Scott. Are there any other hands raised at this time? Uh, no more hands raised at this time, uh, President Norwood. Okay, thank you. Board group agreements. Board group agreements are provided by the, for the board's ready reference as a reminder of our conduct as elected officials. Per board bylaw 9001 amended on November 26, 2019, board members and the superintendent agree 
to the following. Keep learning and achievement for all students is the primary focus. Ask questions for our own understanding. Be open and honest with each other. No surprises includes unapproved communication with law enforcement, news media, regional elected officials on behalf of the district or the board. Be aware that our behavior in the community reflects on us as a team. Communicate proactively with each other about topics, questions, and challenges in open session and in advance of public board meetings in compliance with the Brown Act. Participate in professional development and commit the time and energy necessary to be an informed and effective leader. Actively support the culture of we in action, deed, and opportunity to serve the students and parents of the Malpitas Unified School District. Item seven, action mm -hmm. items. Are there any comments from the public at this time, Scott? Uh, no public comments at this time. Awesome, okay. Action item, follow-up discussion on censure of Board of Education Trustee Michael Sott, Board President. On March 9, 2021, uh, the Board of Education voted 4-0 to approve the resolution of Melpitas Unified School Board of Education to censure school board member Michael Sai. At that meeting, President mm -hmm. Moore included an amendment to Clerk's Leanne's motion to add consequences of action to be determined at a later date and upon review of additional information. On March 9th, um, when we okay. held the, uh, the, when the motion to censure was presented by uh, Vice President Yip Chuan, we had a lively discussion, I believe that lasted more than an hour or so. And it, it appeared that that time still wasn't enough. Uh, there was information that was being shared uh, or that I thought that Board Member Sai would have liked to share at that time that he didn't have, have the opportunity to. In addition, as a part of the censure process, it was, also, it was also informed to us as we reviewed the board group agreements, the governance standards, and the governance standards for centers and procedures that there could be an opportunity for board member Sai as and to communicate with uh, board with board vice president Yip Chuan to determine uh, what we could potentially be the next call of action uh, so that we can make this decision instead of making it all in one motion. And now I'd like to open up the floor for that discussion uh, so that we can make the decision. Oh, one other piece. Uh, Scott, could you bring up the center, please? Yes, hold on one second. Thank you. And if you could scroll to the second page. Oh, well, maybe it's the third page. Keep going. Right. And then it was. Now, therefore, this is the piece that I, I requested to uh, uh, amended the uh, motion. Um, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mopedus Unified School Board, School District Board hereby centers Board, school board member Michael Sai for repeated violation of the board policy and board agreement and the negative impact of his actions and remove him from representing MUSD, including the board assignments. <clears throat> those are the, those, that is what I refer to in terms of consequences of action to be decided at a later date, which also includes um, how, will, how will the uh, decision made tonight uh, be enforced or uh, when will they conclude? Um, and how can we figure out how to move together as a team, move forward together as a governance board on behalf of the students, parents, and the MLPS Unified School District staff. So with that said, um, I'd like to uh, open up the floor. Um, I'd like to open up the floor and not call on anybody in particular in a particular order uh, to begin this discussion in terms of the center action and the consequences to be decided. All right, um, well, I just wanna say for the record, um, since I, this is being recorded for posterity, is that correct, Chris? Being re the, board the board meeting is being recorded. Okay, um, again, at, at, a very high, at a very high level, 
Um, this censure was not valid to begin with. It has violated my due process rights. I was not um, shown any of the allegations being made against me right up until the moment they were published on the public agenda. It is clearly intended to uh, try to shame me in advance of the 2022 elections. And uh, for folks who um, are just tuning in, um, do be aware that Kelly and Chris are um, up in 2022 as well as myself. And there is a vested political interest in trying to take out the competition. Again, I reiterate that um, this censure has not been valid from the beginning. It is an act of political retaliation. And this follow-up meeting, um, and I hate to say it was called at the last minute as a special meeting. Um, I said that it should be put out as, as a regular meeting um, as part of transparency and due process. Um, this was denied. Um, again, I, I don't think this is right. And if it really was right, um, then why is it being done you know, at a time with minimal visibility? I have uh, made repeated good faith overtures to board member Yip Chuan um, offering mediation, all of which were I, um, either non-communicative or responded to with only more threats and um, false allegations. So unfortunately, uh, I, I have been experiencing a lot of um, not so good behavior from others. In the meantime, I have uh, notified others of the situation. Um, even though I was given almost next to no time to defend myself at the last meeting, I did get several letters of support. Um, and since then, more letters of support have come in regarding the propriety of all this. Again, the, the real cause of this, despite what they say, is political retaliation because of a recent meeting where I spoke against another board member's proposal that would have used our students' community service hours as a for for profit businesses. Thank you. So, Mr. Sai, uh, just a couple of points in, in context. The requirement for um, agendizing a board meeting, uh, and particularly a special board meeting, has several reasons and has several opportunities. This item was discussed at the last board meeting. Um, it was recognized that we only have scheduled potentially one board meeting in the month of April. And the time upon which this particular item would fit on our agenda in context of the business that we have been, we have been sworn to an oath to uphold um, would have been toward the latter part of the meeting. So in the spirit of transparency, this is the only item on the agenda tonight. It is being held at a time that is honorable consistently with other meetings, except for it's on an odd day. But again, the special meeting, we followed all the protocols in terms of when the agenda was posted and it was made public. So I do uh, recognize your comments as far as your concerns, but I, I ensured that I took into context all the things that needed to be taken into context before this meeting was called. So thank you for your comments on that. Are there any other comments from the board members? Um, I'd like to share an email that I sent to board member Ty. Um, I know that he's mentioned that he's reached out to me numerous times to try to reconcile, but I, I don't ever recall getting a communication for it. Um, but the last communication I did receive, I did respond to uh, the board member and I said, dear Michael, I have, your, I have received your text message regarding the suggestions that we go to a conflict mediator. This suggestions will not change the fact that a censure resolution has already passed. The censure resolution was about your misconduct and performance and it was not about conflict uh, between the two of us. I'm attaching the resolution to remind you of why it was unanimously passed. Since then, your misconduct continue, continues. 
The latest incident was at our last board meeting on March 23rd. You had your camera off for more than 30 minutes straight during closed session. You're not engaging during discussion and you were posting to your social media on another board member during this meeting. Furthermore, your, your fault accusation and personal attacks will not be accepted nor tolerated. Are you willing to acknowledge your mistakes and be accountable for your actions? Again, I respectfully request that you retract your accusations and make a public apology to me and the board. In addition, your sincere apology should be shared to your social media and be emailed to your constituents since these were the platforms you use for your personal attacks. Please let me know if you're willing to take these steps towards a reconciliation, sincerely. Thank you, board member. Thank you, Vice President Yip Chuan. Are there any other comments from board members? Again, th this is what I was referring to. Uh, get every, every single time I reach out in good faith, I get hit with more false allegations and threats. Um, and that, as you heard just now, she accused me of something in closed session. And this unfortunately has been the pattern with this board member for some time now. Even the most innocuous of acts um, gets turned into an allegation and then packed and twisted into something somehow um, bad. For example, at a previous meeting, she, she verbally attacked me, accusing me of um, showing up at her house or something. And it, it was to wish a Merry Christmas with um, uh, Cheryl at, at the time, um, who was going, going around um, um, delivering cookies. So even something, something as innocuous as a Christmas greeting um, gets twisted by this board member into some, something somehow nefarious. Um, as, as for um, in general, no, I've done nothing wrong. Um, if anyone is owed an apology here in this situation, it's me. And if anyone should be giving an apology here, it is board member Yip Chuan. So I would like to ask you, Kelly, you know, you've expressed that you're not willing to go to mediation, but I would ask you if you're prepared to apologize um, for your conduct, which I've only begun to describe. So let me, let me interject here. Um, this, this special board meeting is, it has a specific intent and that specific intent is to determine the consequences of action regarding the approved censure. So the, so it was my hope that we would, we could have a quality conversation about one, um, the opportunity to, to make the, the best decision as a collective team with you included, Michael, as a part of that discussion regarding the censure um, and the consequences thereof. Moving at this time, um, I believe that you have spoken, Kelly has spoken, and then you've also responded um, in terms of your feelings about these, these particular proceedings and this process. Um, well, these aren't proceedings because a censure is not a legal action, it's a statement. It's, it, this is not a legal act, which, um, which we have shared with you and we have gone over when we went over the governance standards in terms of what a censure actually is. So I wanna, be, I wanna be very mindful and thoughtful of that as well in terms of actually what a censure is. So now moving on to the discussion about the consequences uh, of action to be determined at a later date. Um, Board member Sai has um, Superintendent Jordan, who has the information in terms of the responsibilities for board member Sai? The responsibilities for board member Sai are in our board policies. Right. So he um, he is a he has when we have the assignments, I believe he has a Silicon Valley. Oh, committee. you mean the committees? Yes, the committees. Okay. Yes. Yes, yep. The committees are on our board website. Yeah, I'll get those. And Scott, after we bring those up, I believe we have a hand in the audience. Um, yeah, I have those. So let, um, cause I'm gonna have to share my screen okay. and beautiful. So let's, if it's okay with you, President Nord, can we go to the public comment and then I'll bring up the, yes. okay. 
Um, we have one hand raised this time. It is Michelle Ekrit. We are going to enable your audio, Michelle, and you'll have two minutes to speak. Just unmute yourself and you're good to go. Thank you, Scott. My name is Michelle Ekrit. I live on Mount Diablo Avenue in Milpitas, and I am an MUSD employee. I made a public comment at the October 22nd, 2019 board meeting regarding board member Sai. I pointed out multiple board meetings that Mr. Sai was tardy for or absent from. He obviously did not care to try to honor his commitment he made when he took office. In board member Kelly Yip Schwan's resolution, Mr. Sai was absent or tardy for five additional meetings after I had addressed the board. This should be considered this evening. Also in board member Yip Shuan's resolution were statements that not only has Mr. Sai publicly attacked Ms. Yip Shuan, but he also attacked board member Han Lin for something she did not do. It was done by someone else without her knowledge, which she publicly explained prior to his public accusations. He has also made accusations towards Rhoda Shapiro from the Milpitas Beat when she had a contract with MUSD. This is very concerning to me, as all of these people are women. We have two male board members, and Mr. Sai has not publicly made accus accusations against them. I find this very disturbing that he is showing a pattern of publicly attacking women. As a Milpitas voter and an MUSD employee, I ask that you take all of these items into consider serious consideration before making a decision regarding Mr. Sai's censure penalty this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, President Norwood, and while Michelle was speaking, we did have another hand raised. Uh, I'm going to go to that public comment. I do have the committees ready to go. Uh, Victor San Vicente, we are going to enable your audio and you will have two minutes to speak. Um, go right ahead. Yeah, I, I'm a private citizen of Milpitas. I'm also a member of the Milpitas Chamber of Commerce, and uh, I'm very concerned of the actions of uh, board member uh, Michael Tai because uh, he claimed that the Milpitas or Milpitas Chamber of Commerce uh, employs slave labor. And uh, that's far from the truth. And in a way, that's an insultive uh, statement. As a matter of fact, we, we give uh, very good advice and very uh, profitable jobs to uh, students and everybody alike. Uh, and they learn from, from it. So I would like to say that he insulted our Chamber of Commerce, as a, and he needs to apologize publicly on the Facebook and all public media that he, he actually has been, what do you call it, uh, ostracizing our, our Chamber of Commerce. So he needs to do that and as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay, um, and we have another hand raised for this item. Uh, it is a Jacqueline Romero. We are gonna enable your audio and you will have two minutes to speak on this item. Go Good right evening, ahead. once again, thank you for the time. Um, as a trainer myself, I teach the results formula to my students. As with everything in life to get results, we must take action. The actions that we take, we we are created by our feelings and our emotions. Our feelings and our emotions are then created by our thoughts and our thoughts are created by our beliefs. The beautiful thing in America is we all have our own beliefs. Beliefs are powerful, they drive our actions. So Michael's actions were consistent with his beliefs in representing his, his, his constituents to protect them from whatever he believed was happening that was wrong just as your actions are cons consistent with your beliefs. Not one of you have communicated to your constituents regarding uh, what's going on with the district. And what I mean by that is using all resources like social media. 
I had a great conversation with board member Min No regarding this conversation. And he brought his beliefs to the table, which I completely respect and I understand. Several times I have sent Mrs. Uh, President, Vice President Yip um, conversations through Facebook and have not gotten a response, which I'm sad. And she said, email me. Uh, okay, well, I like to use Facebook, right? There's different beliefs that we have on how we're gonna communicate. I believe social media has become a very strong tool to be able to com communicate to our community. The reason why I bring this up is because this censure could create precedents where our board members do not have the freedom, the belief to communicate to their constituents. That to me is a problem. Please consider, reconsider your belief on the censure and what effects it will have long-term. Thank you. Okay, and um, that was the last public comment at this time. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and bring up the... Uh, Thank you. The, the central resolution uh, requests that board member Sai be removed from all of his school site uh, assignments as well as committees, which, which indicates that he would, um, if, if that is the motion that carries um, this evening, then he would be removed from the school side assignment of Rose Elementary, Pomeroy Elementary, CDC of Rose and Sunny Hills. Uh, as well. Brother Norwood, may I cut in? Uh, you're reading assignments under myself. I and apologize the board for member that. Side. So, so I can we clarify for, that? Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. So again, um, the assignments he would be removed from would be Zanker Elementary, Weller Elementary, and Cal Hills High School as far as school side assignments. As far as school board member assignments on internal and external committees, he would be uh, removed. Um, he's, he's, not the, he's the alternate for the CBAC. He is the, an alternate for the city uh, public safety um, and um, emergency preparedness commission. He is the alternate for the Santa Clara County School Boards Association he is the representative for Metro Ed. He is, and he is the alternate for the PTA council rep. Are there any comments at this time? Michael, is there any, is there any, do you believe that there's any reason or could you, I would be interested if you're interested in sharing why you would like to remain on these school side assignments for the boards to hear in consideration in terms of the next action that they may take? Uh, well, uh, some minutes earlier, um, Chris, you were talking about how a censure is not a legal thing and it's a statement. Um, and if it was just a statement, then let's leave it at that. But what's being put on the table now sounds like more than a statement. You're trying to, or sorry, I won't say you're trying to, but um, if this goes ahead, it will have a material effect on um, my ability to represent the constituents and bring their voices to the table, as well as you know, work with the community that I joined the school board in order to serve. So, you know, if, if you're talking about a censure as only a statement, um, you know, the statement's already been done. You know, you got the censure you wanted, um, but this is really- Oh, but so nobody wanted a censure. Wait, what, what, sorry, come nobody again? Nobody wanted a censure. We okay, so you, got, you got a censure, whether, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll leave out, if you say you didn't want it, um, for, so whatever the case, the censure was done already. The statement was made, and this just seems like trying to like 
drag it out and put additional punishments to the point where it's not just a statement. May I interject here? Um, our board group agreements, number one, talks about keeping learning and achievement for all students as a primary focus. My objective for tonight's meeting is that how do we figure out us as a governance team moving forward to keep that objective uh, at the forefront, especially during this pandemic, especially since we are uh, moving forward with additional uh, expanded in-person learning this week. That's what this conversation is about, board member side. It's, it's not about additional punishment. It's about how can we continue to operate as a governance team going forward. Right, so we can operate by continuing to operate and you talk about the focus being on number one. Well, I think trying trying to like publicly discuss how you're going to punish me is taking away the focus from learning and achievement and it's turning this into like a political arena. Um, so um, on that, I, I do I do agree, you know, this the fact that this is even being done. You know, this special meeting where where you're putting up for discussion, you know, how 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 to punish Michael Tsai is taking away from the objective of uh, learning and achievement for all students. Board member Tsai, um, I cannot help you on how you view these things. You are the only one that is stating that this is a political arena. This is not, this is a special school board meeting. And again, I'm gonna reiterate, how do we move forward as a complete governance team to keep learning, uh, focused on learning and achievement for our students. And with that said, uh, from a feedback committee perspective, we had one last week. Um, I attended. Uh, I did not see you attend uh, from that perspective. And so this is more about how can I, as a, a fellow board member, help you? Will you continue to participate in these assignments? Or do you want to have a reallocation of the assignments to further support, again, goal number one? So, well, you brought up CBAC. Um, can, can you, uh, Scott, can you pull up that um, the list again? So, okay. Um, if if you wanted to go to CBAC, that's that's your right. Um, you know, I serve the community um, the best I am able. So, from a communication perspective, right? If you had attended, I would have dropped off because yourself and Vice President Kelly Yipschwan were the official assignment there. Again, as a, a part of the governance team, I'm there in the support of our team and our district, right? So that we have representation from the school board at the Community Board Advisory Council meeting. Again, I'm going to reiterate, it's just more about open communication, how we can continue to govern. Okay, um, on that, I, I didn't hear any um, communication um, from Kelly Yip Chuan about that CBAC meeting. Uh, my understanding is, is usually the assumption is the, the rep goes and if for whatever reason they can't make it, then they communicate with the alternate. Um, and I didn't receive such a communication. Um, if you were there, um, I guess that's good. Thank you, board member No, for um, trying to put this conversation in context uh, regarding not being punishment about how we move forward, how we look at the responsibilities that we have as board members on behalf of the Mel Peters Unified School District, how we communicate with each other. And I would look at board group, board group agreement number five, be aware that our behavior in the community reflects on us as a team. Mr. Sai, I'm sure that you may be, I'm sure that, I can't say you're sure, let me, let me put this in context. Are you aware that your social media posts regarding board members and your perspective when we agree to be, when we, we look to ask questions if we have concerns about comments being made as a board? And when those statements are made in public without asking questions to the specific board members, either in open session or directly afterwards, um, creates an impression of the community where there could be, um, well, creates a strange impression of the community and makes them curious in terms of 
what is going on versus you asking for clarification. Is that a possibility that you could see that point that we're talking about our behavior, the way that we communicate in public regarding one another and the work that we do when we haven't received clarification or been or asked questions is does affect the spirit and the community of the district that we serve. With all due respect, Chris, I have asked for clarification multiple times over the past several months on quite a wide variety of issues. Um, a lot of times I receive an answer that Frank, uh, um, uh, I'll put it as politely as I can, doesn't really add up. Um, and when I relay those answers to the public, they tell me the answers don't make sense either. And frankly, um, they have a point. So when, when I don't get clear answers, I'm gonna keep asking questions and when real clarification isn't being provided, you know, I'm, go I'm gonna give the public the truth. Um, even in our most recent exchange, I asked you a few questions which you did not answer, uh, yet afterwards you, t you kept insisting that you did answer the questions and any sort of public agency reviewing our communications could easily see that you did not answer the questions. So frankly, Chris, I, I have- would be, I, would, I would disagree in that context because I am aware that I did answer all the questions. So as we continue to move forward through this process um, and talking about what our next actions are as it relates to um, the, the approved resolution um, on the censure, could you, could, Scott, could you bring up the items again, please? Bring up the assignments? Yes. Okay. So as I've identified the, the different items um, that Michael Sai is uh, responsible for, as far as the school side assignments and then the school board member assignments on internal and external committees for the 2020 calendar year. We have the opportunity to determine um, what the next action is going to be or what the action will be, if there will be any action in regarding to the censure. We have the ability uh, as far as the consequences to the action to determine what those next items are. Michael, uh, are, are there any other comments at this point before we, before we call for uh, a motion? Well, I want to, you know, just remind the board that, you know, um, board member Tsai has been a distraction to our focus. His behavior counters what the board agreements are about. Um, he's not engaging. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys uh, saw the negative post uh, that he um, put to his social media during our board meeting last week. And it was, um, one, you know, towards one of our board, uh, fellow board members. So I, I do recall that in our, um, in our training, uh, in terms of being open and honest, and in our training, we talked about being fully engaged um, at our board meeting. So it is, uh, it is uh, concerning that during a board meeting that uh, a, a board member is posting um, during social media. Uh, I know that we are in an era of virtual learning and we are not all in person. So, uh, but, that, but that is concerning. And we should be thoughtful of that. The fact that the, the, this is the school district's time. This is the school district's business that we are here to handle, uh, to listen intently to the speakers um, and to be able to be willing and engage in thoughtful discussion as we make decisions on behalf of our con of what, what the term that's being commonly used as constituents. Thank you for that. Um, thank you for that information. I should clarify that I did not post on social media during a board meeting. Um, there was a, a gap of time between when closed session ended and there was a brief recess before open session would resume. So no, I do not post on social media during a board meeting. And it was an attack on one of our fellow board members. And he, <laughs> shortly after that, he deleted. But if you want me to remind you, I do have a copy of that before it was deleted. 
So nothing I have ever posted on social media is untrue. And if you choose to interpret the truth as an attack, that is unfortunate. And um, frankly, a little disappointing. Um, there, there's actually a, a, an American president, Harry Truman. Um, he had a great piece of wisdom about this actually. Um, it, it was, I believe in, uh, after he became president and there was some sort of discussion going on um, and uh, someone said to President Truman, um, and I'll make the language a little more polite. Um, he said, give him hell, Harry. And President Truman responded to that person, I don't give anyone hell. I just tell people the truth. And some people think that's hell. President Truman. And for those who end up watching this report later, I, I just want to make that clear. I'm going to keep giving the people the truth um, to the fullest extent of the law. I have never given out any confidential um, information that I am legally prohibited from doing so, uh, but nothing I have ever said is untrue. So, yeah, board yeah, member Scott. Yes, board member, no. Uh, there was a public comment earlier that, that mentioned that we all have our own truth. My truth is not your truth or vice president's truth, et cetera. But we have to respect each other's truth. However, you can't go and, and force your truth onto others. That does not create bridges um, as far as moving our district forward. Hearing our conversations right now, I'm looking for how can we work together Again, I'm gonna focus on that uh, in this meeting. How can we move together and find a way to interact uh, for the remainder uh, of our time together? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do wanna move forward and, and work together as one board. Um, I, I do wanna point out that um, some of the message I sent out, I'm, act, I'm acting in self-defense. Um, you know, right, right now, some people are trying to paint me as going out attacking others, I'm not. Um, in fact, I mean, af after that board meeting, I didn't say anything. It wasn't until others were bringing to my attention that um, the friends and associates of another board member were going around social media promoting hate and lies about me. Um, I communicated and offered that board member the chance to um, deny those statements and reject them, um, but I received no response. And uh, community members kept saying, like, Michael, you really need to set the record straight. And whenever I see the record being distorted, I'm going to set it straight, you know, in as respectful a way as possible. Um, you know, I read that censure resolution against me, and frankly, it, it was kind of disappointing. Um, one of the statements I made, I was actually defending another board member um, with one of those statements um, because, because there was a time during that election cycle um, when, when a campaign message was sent out uh, make, using that board member's name, extensive use of the title, and very much created an impression that this board member was was acting on behalf of the district to endorse a political candidate. I received so many complaints about that. I received a lot of community members complaining to me about this politicization of the school district and misuse of the title and, and district name. And I kept saying, hey, you know, hold your horses. Let's, let's, let's not jump to accusations. And I was trying to defend this board member. And I didn't make any public statement about that for quite some time. It wasn't until a later meeting that this board member actually apologized had to apologize at the end of the meeting, acknowledging that what had happened. And right now you're saying, oh, no, no, it, it wasn't this board member. It, it, it was done without her knowledge or permission. Um, I don't recall that was what, what was said at the night of the apology. But regardless, I, I saw that the board member apologized. I'm like, okay. But yeah, I was still getting these complaints. And then I realized, oh, because the board member apologized at the very end of the meeting. And we all know that at the very end of the meeting, there's not that many people watching. 
So probably, you know, all, all these people didn't see the apology. So I actually made that statement trying to defend the board member and to tell all these people making complaints that, hey, you know, she apologized. She apologized and she said, it, it's not gonna happen again. So even when I'm trying to defend another board member and help build cohesion, it gets turned into an attack that's used against me. Even when I do the right thing, even when I'm trying to help other board members, I'm painted as the bad guy. And um, you know, now, now you're saying that, oh, you know, Michael accused another board member of something that isn't true. Uh, fact of the matter is, uh, nothing I said there wasn't true. And that board member is in fact currently under investigation by the uh, Fair Political Practices Commission over um, those campaign messages. Um, well, Mr. Sai, just to, so that we can kind of get back in context uh, of this moment, and I appreciate you taking the time to try to clarify your actions on behalf of uh, another board member. So we, we appreciate that. Uh, we do have another hand raised, Scott. Yeah, I was just going to um, say we do have a, a hand raised, um, Carlton Stice. We are going to active, enable your audio and you'll have two minutes to speak. Go right ahead, Mr. Stice. Thank you. I wanted to uh, make a quick statement that, you know, when the list came up of board member assignments, I actually had to be reminded by that list that Michael Tsai was the representative for Calaveras Hills High School because I have received zero communication, zero school visits um, since he has been a board member, except for I believe in his first month, he came by the school and rather than ask questions, he seemed to be telling us um, what his take on how we should collect data and you know, try to make improvements to our school. And I think that's most unfortunate because his service as a board member needs to be focused on his assignments and helping, and as he says, serving his constituents. And I can, you know, speak only from my perspective, but I did not even remember that Mr. Sai was the board rep for Cal Hills because <clears throat> he has been so not involved in the school. <clears throat> and that is very concerning uh, to me that someone would take so much time to continue to seem to draw politics into the workings of the board and mention politicization and yet have not been doing one of the basic responsibilities, which is supporting one of his three, I believe, school sites. So I wanted to mention that. Thank you. Okay, um, we have no other hands raised at this time, President Norwood. President Norwood, can I uh, take a minute? Absolutely. So Michael, I just want to um, let you know that I do appreciate that you share because when you say that board member and she apologized at the end of the meeting when nobody uh, stayed on to witness that I apologize. I just want to let everybody know that, yes, I did. I apologize to the fact that I did not authorize that mailer to be out. But anyway, today is not about me. It's about how we as a team can work together the actions that we take today is just to assure the public that we hold ourselves accountable to act ethically and responsibly. 
And that's the only way to win the trust and the support from the staff, the students, the parents, the teachers, the community. So let's let us not, you know, I say this and another board member say something and then you have to come in and say something else. This I feel that is a waste of the community's time that they have to stay on and listen to. Um, I think it said enough last meeting or last two meetings or even a whole year round. So, and another thing, when you said you have tons of people questioning why that Miller was out as a team, I think any one of us would appreciate if you say, hey, Han, there's a mailer, there's a question. My friend or my entourage or my constituents mail me or email me this. Is it you? Alert us. You didn't do any of that. Uh, so uh, that's all I have to share. So I, I think so I, I think one of the things before, and here's the thing, um, because I, I know this is a very unique situation. I, I want, uh, there are asks, the, the board has asks from each other. And, and it, it may appear that at this moment, because we're discussing the consequences or the, the results uh, that needed to be decided upon within uh, an approved resolution, the asks are for us to be able to work together and to uh, language like hold each other accountable um, should be considered as hold each other up so that we can support the community the best way that we possibly can. We are all one at early on, we are all unique individuals in this process. We all have different lenses. We all communicate differently. And for a while, our, our board meetings were cohesive. Our board meetings were um, the language and the input from each individual board member was very powerful and the community felt good about the direction that we were heading as a board. And unfortunately, um, I am not a fan of social media. Unfortunately, these third party uh, hearsay uh, comments on social media, a number of different things creates these situations upon which we become divisive. And the goal is not to be divisive. And this is to each board member, not, not solely Michael side. The, the goal is not to be divisive. The, the goal is Milpitas unified, board unified. Each person has their own individual voice. Each person has the opportunity to present themselves in this process as we recognize the responsibilities that we have. What I'm listening for from each of the board members, from the community and from you, Michael, is how do we move this process forward? How do we recognize our shortcomings? How do we recognize our strengths and our weaknesses so that as a team, we can govern, um, again, one individual vote, and as you know, uh, none of us is, we don't think the same yet, yet and still very honestly, um, and there are a large number of votes where we vote very similar because we, we know that the direction of the school district is positive, and but there are areas that we do need to improve and that's where we push forward. So I wanna make sure that the, the context of why we are here and determining what the motion who's going to make a motion and if that motion is going to be accepted is, um, is important in terms of uh, how we're able to be able to work together as men has stated as a team, as Han has stated, um, how we come together and respect our differences and to be able to move forward. Um, and it is unfortunate that it, it, it had to come this type of situation for us to be able to have this kind of conversation um, 
But as, as mentioned, when we re review the governance standards, this conversation has to be in public. This, the, the, it, it just is what it is. Um, and there's no other way to get around it. So I don't want you to feel as if you're being attacked. It is, it is, it is an opportunity for us to determine uh, what our next actions will be. And even after this, I am gonna ask the superintendent to schedule a, a board retreat so we can continue to find ways to have better understanding, to communicate with one another, regardless of the outcome of today. I, I will say that uh, with, board, with, uh, with the principal Stites had mentioned in terms of your assignment and not being in contact with them, that is concerning. Um, that uh, that that makes me that's when I look at the actions, knowing that um, each of us has an opportunity to communicate with one school and get a better understanding of what their concerns are, and then be able to bring that to the board meeting. Um, those types of things. This is this is what we're here for. This is why we're elected to do this work and represent these schools and have the school assignments that we have. And I will recognize the fact that you do bring uh, Silicon Valley career technical education input back to the board meetings. And that's very highly appreciated on your behalf. So um, we do see the good work that you do. Um, I do see the good work that you do. And we want that good work to pass. We want that good work to continue to show up um, on behalf of the work that we are doing on behalf of Melpitas Unified School District. So are there any other comments from board members regarding this matter? I just want to thank uh, Principal Stice for alerting us um, of what's happening. Um, and I'm just curious, how many times has board member Tsai, I guess, um, engaged with Zanker and Weller? Um, I, I'm just curious from my own knowledge, I mean, are the other principals um, having the same difficulties because um, the board rep is not uh, doing their duties? I mean, that's having these duties is important. I believe that we have that information um, readily available and it is a it is almost a uh, board member, uh, Vice President Yip Chuan. It is a, uh, it's a great question. It's a great question to be asked of uh, not only board member side, but all of us, are we in communication uh, with the school sites that we represent? That's a great question. And that is something that I think that should be added to the agenda for our board retreat, Superintendent Jordan, as we prepare uh, to host that, can we in, re remind ourselves um, about the, the retreat and the responsibilities and what those roles are in terms of communicating with the schools uh, in, in, in the proper fashion. Thank you for that. And thank you, board member Yip Chuan. I do wanna say that I take exception to the notion that I'm not committed to the schools um, to say that I haven't been doing on-campus visits. Well, hello, there's a pandemic um, and I, for one, thought the visit to Cal Hills was very good, and we were laying out a, a positive vision forward to keep um, improving and enhancing our um, outcomes for our students. Uh, I have been very supportive of Cal Hills, including on social media, so to, to hear this really comes as a surprise to me, uh, which I find um, kind of just um, you, a, a little... You just, you just find a reality. I mean, that... No, uh, well, the thing is, I'm surprised to hear this, and and as for for the other visits, um, it it's kind of putting me in a catch twenty two because you know uh, I I did make an effort to go around and visit all these sites, um, in, including making appointments and meeting with the folks, um, and this is something that that I was surprised by um, early on, where even though even after you know I had made a made a scheduled visit. Um, later on, I find out that someone is spreading a rumor about me behind my back, um, talking as if I just showed up unannounced, and they claimed that I, I was uh, following the secretary around um, without their permission, and I found that, frankly, appalling. 
um, the secretary invited me on a tour of various facilities and we had a, a very good conversation. So there's this thing going on where when I do a certain, when I do a certain thing to serve the community, uh, someone goes around and tries to twist it um, and, and try to like, um, I don't know, some, some, somehow cast me as the bad guy. So I, I take a certain message from that. And then later on, when I when I adjust hey, to try to you would, you would right as you had mentioned earlier about truths. You you had mentioned earlier about truths, and board member No had mentioned about truths, and everybody has their truth. And each individual and the way they express their truths and their concerns um, is up to that individual because that's that individual's truth. And we have to receive that. I will tell I will tell you that um, this is a difficult uh, and exciting and challenging opportunity for each of us as board members. It, it is, um, and it comes with uh, a lot of responsibility, uh, in many cases, unnecessary scrutiny, uh, but there's a reason why they call governance teams. There's a reason why we have board group agreements it's a reason why we each have individual votes. And this is not message is not only for Mr. Sai, but it's for all of us. And I know that anytime that I try to speak, I make sure that I'm listening to myself first. This is difficult. And we have to be humble in terms of how we work through the issues and the way that we communicate and work with one another. Otherwise, this doesn't work or it doesn't work as well as it could. And that's what I want. And that is why I brought this item back instead of just approving the resolution as was. I said, let's bring this back and try to work through this as a governance team moving forward. We can agree to disagree. That's important. But the, but the concern about the accusation, the concerns about the attendance, the concerns about uh, how we communicate with one another and about each other when we're not in each other's presence matters. It, it does because we are setting an example uh, for the, we have the executive cabinet, we have well attended uh, board meetings, we have a lot of things going on and it does matter. So with that and being mindful of the time, um, we have the opportunity here to make some decisions in terms of the, uh, the, the censure and the opportunity talked about, Scott, could you bring up the resolution again, please? Did you uh, did you want me to start up top or was no. it that graph? Oh, no. on that graph, okay. We are at centers for repeated violation of the board policy, board group agreement and the negative impact of his actions and remove him from representing MUSD, including board assignments. That is what we are determining here. There appears to be two parts to that language, right? Uh, and, and we need to um, segregate the, the two as far as representing MUSD as a whole and the, the board assignments uh, as well. Because um, even if he's removed from board assignments, that does not necessarily mean board member Sai is not representing MUSD because he's still sitting in his trustee seat. So uh, a little clarity uh, in regards to that language will be appreciated. Say that one more time, man. So there are two points there in that action, um, that in that re resolution about representing MUSD and including the board assignments. Okay. So even if we decide to reallocate the board assignments, that does not fully eliminate the, that uh, board member side representing MUSD because he still is a school board trustee. Well, point taken.
Are there any other comments regarding what, what, what we're looking at? Scott, that should stay up, please, because that, that language is everything. And we do have a hand uh, up as well. Right, that's what I was gonna. Oh, sorry, thank you, thank you, Scott. <laughs> sorry about that. That's all right, that's all right. Did you wanna, you wanna go to the public comment? Okay. Yes. Let me just stop that, see what we got. Okay, so we do have a hand raised. It is Alicia Salgado Malero. We are gonna enable your audio, Alicia. You'll take yourself, unmute yourself and you'll have two minutes to speak. Go right ahead. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, you're good. Great, thank you. Um, I am a teacher from Zanker School and I would like to give my um, perception or my truth of what I've seen um, as far as board member Sai and his involvement um, that I have seen over at Zanker. So I can recall him coming by one first day of school and taking a selfie with myself and another teacher on yard duty. But other than that, I cannot recall the last time I've seen him. And I know in the time of COVID, we wouldn't see him on campus, but even virtually at some of our PTA meetings or the town hall that we held where Superintendent Jordan and also Board President Norwood and Vice President Yip Chuan attended. I cannot remember seeing him as part of that meeting. So uh, just like Principal Stice um, mentioned, you know, I had forgotten that Board Member Sai was our board representative because I just, I've not seen him present or really involved over at Zanker. So I wanted to just make that comment to uh, make that aware. But uh, again, I'm not speaking for anyone else other than what I have seen. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Um, we have no other hands raised at this time. Oh, we do have a hand raised now. Uh, let's see. Um, Michelle Kessinger has her hand raised and um, Michelle, we are gonna enable your audio and uh, you just take yourself off mute and you'll have two minutes. Thank you, um, Scott. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I agree with um, the process that's going forth right now. I do have a question regarding the language that was just brought forward, um, stating that, you know, to stop um, Mr. Sai from representing MUSD. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I believe that you can have a resolution go forward about taking away his assignments, but since it is an elected position, I'm not sure what that would look like by having him not represent um, the school district and what she was elected to do so. But I do agree with the fact that if he's not doing his duties, showing up late, sleeping on the job, and so forth, yes, we should go forward with that. Thank you, Michelle. And I'm just waiting to see if there's any other hands. There is not any hands raised at this time, so no more public comment as of right now. Mr. Sai, if you could be so kind and uh, share uh, your, I would probably say um, your attendance, because we don't have anyone here from uh, Silicon Valley Career Technical Education. If you could share your attendance um, to those meetings with us, that would be helpful. Um, yes, off the top of my head, I believe there's actually only a single one that I did not go to. And uh, I believe I actually um, messaged you guys about it. Um, other than that, um, my attendance has been perfect um, at all, all the events. I, as for the one that I didn't go to, I actually, I actually distinctly recall uh, messaging you and I believe uh, Han and, and 
and Kelly about it as well. Um, I, I asked Han if, if she was like, if she was gonna be around on December 11th, I, I wanna say it was. I attended that one. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and then Han, Han said, oh, is, is it any of your business? And then I, I said, well. well why, why would, <laughs> that, that Michael, it's a prime, that's okay, a prime. Michael, here, Chris, uh, President Norwood, out in the blue, Michael texted me say, hey, do you have any vacation plan for the month of December? I say, oh my God, is it any of your business if I take vacation or not? That's the, the point. I, I didn't say that because you, if you would say it in the context like, okay, Han, I will be out. I will be sick. I won't attend this. Are you available to attend the meeting for me? Then the answer would be different. That's all. Okay, so. So thank you for, um, wow. Well, President Norwood, it seems like every time we take a step forward, we, we end up taking two steps back uh, in this process here. And so, um, again, uh, understanding everyone has their, their opinions here, uh, we would like to, oh, I would like to see that we figure out how to move forward here, right? Uh, again, this is in support of what we can do as a district. So board member Sai, as far as the assignments, uh, you've heard from, from uh, several public comments as, as far as the relationship with each of the school sites. Uh, in my estimation, it looks like you would have to double down the efforts to rebuild those uh, relationships at those school sites if you have the capacity to. If, if you don't, again, we as a governance team um, are here to, to help with the reallocation of assignments. Um, and, and from that standpoint, uh, I pass that back to you, board member Sai. Um, I want to say I, I was not, I wasn't, I'm, um, you talk about the board agreement of no surprise. I'm surprised to hear this feedback. Um, but you know, I'm hearing it. Um, so the question here is what are you, or at board member side, what will you do after hearing that? I'm, I'm not looking for you to, to hear preventative self-defense comments. I'm looking for what can you do as taking that step forward? I'm, I'm going to do my best to to support um, everyone in in however however they can be supported. Um, if if they they feel like you know I'm not paying enough attention to these uh, school sites, I can do that more. But from what I heard, it sounded like um, there might be some other issues at play. Um, sometimes I have tried to reach out to staff members, um, yet yet then I get told that you know I'm not like. I'm not supposed to talk to staff members, um, that I'm only supposed to talk to the superintendent, which I unfortunately I feel it kind of hampers communication a little. So maybe we can work on that. Because frankly, I, um, usually I have been talking with staff members um, to coordinate that. Um, but yeah, so back to the previous thing, you know, if, if you didn't want to hear about the details of that story of Metro Ed, um, I, I was just trying to share share the it was, it, was, yeah. it was it was a real simple question. The question was okay. So, about your, so, it was about your your because because what we've heard thus far are from two different school sites about uh, your engagement. So um, my question, because as we look to make the decisions in terms of, and thank you, um, Michelle Kessinger, for your feedback in terms of that language in terms of. Um, he is an elected official, so he, he, the removal of representing MUSD when it's an elected official, that is not something that can be done through resolution. But what can be done through resolution are the committee assignments, uh, as well as the other activities through the central resolution. And so I'm trying to work on whatever motion comes forward, um, how, how I'm going to proceed. So. Um, that's why I asked the question regarding uh, Silicon Valley Career Technical Ed, and so, so that's where I'm at in okay. this process. Okay, and I'll give you the second. As, as well as well as the other board members in terms of the next decisions that we are prepared to make. Okay, so then I'll give you a very the shortest answer possible. Um, to the best of my knowledge, my attendance at um, Silicon Valley Career Technical Education has been um, perfect with the one exception of that one meeting, which I was talking about. Um, secondly, I, I do have um, 
and and I, I do have letters from um, the board members there who can attest to that. Okay. Okay. Would you like to hear one of the letters? Just, you know, I Why, just- So, I, so knowing, my, my question would be knowing that this board meeting was coming, knowing that you were at the last board meeting when, when this was decided, knowing that we've had communication about sharing information with the board um, and on the record, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm unclear why that information was not submitted or shared so that it could be shared with the board um, in the process versus you uh, reading it over Zoom. Now, see, see, I, I object to that sort of framing. It was uh, there was some sort of lack of clarity because you called this late last night, one week ago. It was extremely short notice, which really just doesn't give me any time to prepare. Okay. So, so I don't, I take exception to like, you know, exception, being, exception uh, noted. Um, mean, like it's somehow my fault. No, not at all. I just asked the question, why, um, why don't we have that information? I just asked the question and you clarified the fact that you felt it was short notice, but you do have the information. So thank and, you. And even last time when I had it, you told me I, I didn't have time to read it. Thank you. Um, are there any other comments or questions at this time uh, from board members? Well, I, I just want to say that, you know, um, although there's a pandemic, um, you still can engage with Zoom calls, uh, meetings where we have been doing. And I don't recall that um, member Ty attended any of the town hall meetings. I mean, I think I, I saw um, everyone at at least one or two or all of the meetings. Um, so with that, I mean, I would like to make a motion. If there's no other objections, I'd like to make a motion that the uh, censure um, to uh, the, board, uh, the board assignment until December when we um, decide on the next uh, board assignments. Scott, can you bring up the board assignments item again, please? I'm gonna state for the record that I have attended most of the town halls. I believe there was one recent one that I wasn't able to make it all um, to the entirety of, but to say that I've been consistently not going to the town halls is outright false. And um, Scott, if you're able to look up the, the records of those Google Hangouts town, town halls, I think, it is easy to demonstrate the falsity of board member Yip Chuan's claim. So we have two items here. Um, I, Scott, I can't see the title above because it says opening Google Docs. So we have the school board member school side assignments and we have the school board member assignments on internal and external committees. So there, there are two items. And then to clarify the language um, in the resolution, it. Um, the sentence says, and remove him from representing MUSD on school site and school board member assignments of internal and external committees. So I um, believe that um, to me, the internal is being the uh, the um, representative for the, the schools, you know, within MUSD, the external is the Metro Ed. For the uh, board assignments. So, so repeat Kelly for me. So um, overall it's pretty much all of his um, board assignments of um, Metro Ed. Zanker, Weller, Cow Hills. I believe those are all the ones that um, he's the board rep for. Did you make a motion? I did. Okay. I, I motioned that we. Um, uh, suspend his um, 
I'm sorry, can you move up the, the um, resolution? Um, okay. Uh, that we um, suspend his um, board um, assignments until the uh, until December when we um, go over what the new assignments will be, the one that we do at the um, in, in December. And also um, that we will um, do an evaluation should be conducted to determine his behavior at that December meeting. So my motion is to remove Michael Tsai from school site and in uh, school site internal and external committees until the um, end of our term in December when we go over the, the new assignments. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, objection, um, part of that motion is not valid. Uh, board member Yip Chuan does not have the authority to remove me from external committees. Um, Metro Ed is governed by the Joint Powers Agreement um, and its own rules, um, which I did consult. Um, you can make a motion on the other stuff, but you do not have the authority to remove me from external committees. At this point, I would like to read a, um, some of the letters. Um, since you brought it up, Kelly, I think it is relevant. So Scott, so, so Michael, what we'll do as a part of this process is that there's a motion on the floor. We do the second, if there is a second, and then we continue our discussion. So I'm, we are going to definitely recognize um, this continuance of this process in terms of the items that you would like to share. So we have a motion, um, we, but we do need a point of clarification because uh, board member Sai says that he cannot be removed uh, from the external committee. Uh, Superintendent Jordan, do you have any information regarding that? I will look in our policies, however, because the board is the one that selects who will represent the board at the external committees, it also leads that the board should be able to remove those who are on external committees. Um, the Metro Ed Board is not like a city council where you have a mayor who sometimes determines that they're going to select who will be on the city council's subcommittees. The Metro Ed Board, um, have its representatives designated by the school boards of each of the joint powers associations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have um, we have a a motion. Um, do we have a second? I second that. We have a motion and we have a second. We also have a, there was also a hand, but we're gonna to go to board member Sai. Board member Sai. Uh, yes, as, as I said, um, you know, that uh, motion is not valid um, because of the joint powers agreement. I, I have, a, I'll take the time to read a letter from uh, trustee Linda Goitia, um, to whom it may concern. Last year, Michael Tsai replaced departing board member, Dan Bobay on the Metro Ed Board of Education. I have found him to be a person of integrity and have enjoyed working with him. He has been proactive in learning about our programs and process and very supportive of our efforts to secure reliable funding for our future. It is my hope that Michael will be able to continue serving the Metro Ed District in the year ahead as we move to reopen as a hybrid model on March 29th. Uh, regards, Linda Goitia, trustee, Campbell Union High School District. Uh, another one. Here's another letter. Uh, to the Milpita School Board and all other concerned parties, I am writing as a veteran school board member, 30 years as a trustee since 1990, to express my strong opposition to any efforts at removing Michael Tsai from the Metro Ed Governing Board. Trustee Tsai 
has served effectively on the Metro Ed Governing Board, always demonstrating the highest levels of ethics and a passion for students and staff. He has been a valued partner and team member helping to get Metro Ed on a path towards stable state funding during these very challenging times. In recognition of his contributions, we, his Metro Ed board colleagues, have elected him to serve as board clerk this year, which puts him in line to be vice president and then board president for Metro Ed. The Metropolitan Education District is governed according to the Joint Powers Agreement, and I question whether the Milpitas School Board has the authority to unilaterally remove Trustee Tsai from our Metro Ed Board in the midst of his two-year term once he has been duly appointed per the Joint Powers Agreement. In any event, maintaining Trustee Michael Tsai on the Metro Ed Board is the right thing to do. Any internal issues or political differences with Mr. Tsai should not be displaced onto the premier career technical education agency for which Trustee Tsai is a respected board member and esteemed partner, uh, Manuel. Signed, J. Manuel Herrera, Vice President, Eastside Union High School District and Metro Ed Governing Board member. Um, For clarification, this was before my time. Dan uh, Dan Bobe was formally appointed to the the Metro Ed, uh, correct? And uh, I should let me reframe that. Uh, Dan Bobe was formally appointed by MUSD board to be part of Metro Ed. Was that correct? Yes, and if you look at the board policy on the organizational meetings, number five says that. Well, it's very short, so I'll just read the whole thing. The governing board shall hold an annual organizational meeting with the time limits prescribed by law. At this meeting, the board shall elect a president, vice president, or clerk from its members, authorize signatures, develop a schedule of regular meetings for the year, develop a board calendar for the year, and designate board representatives. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a motion, we have a second. Is there anything else that you'd like to add, Michael? Um, well, I propose you just split the motion because I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna argue about the internal stuff, but um, you, I mean, this the external stuff is an overstepping of authority. It is not. I'm sorry, that frankly, Chris, that remains to be seen. It, um, trust me, it's not, but anyway. So we have a motion, we, we have a second. As we continue in this discussion, um, here, here are my comments. Uh, they speak highly over there of you. And it seems like uh, they're getting something from you that uh, we, we are not. Um, and um, I recognize the, the fact that um, the, the letters that you have there um, display your effectiveness in working with that team. If you have two of the governing board members there willing to write, write you that letter of re those letters of recommendation and support to continue. Uh, so, uh, so those are duly noted uh, from me that I do recognize the fact that um, they're getting something or there's something occurring there um, that's not occurring here um, in which they have your attention or the, the method upon which uh, they're proceeding in comparison to where you are primarily, because we're the primary, that you're a board representative there, but you're elected here. And so I have to take into consideration the fact that there's something going on over there that um, that we have to be mindful of in terms of this decision or this voting process. And those are my comments.
Well, if, if we're all here, if no one, um, I got plenty more letters that I'm happy to read if um, we're all here. At, at this time, we have a motion and a second. Um, and there's an additional I, discussion at this time. The, the next step is to move forward uh, with a vote um, on the motion, or if there is an amendment to the motion, I believe this is the time that that would be made as well. Okay, so two things. My proposed amendment is to uh, strike out the part about uh, Metropolitan Education District, because frankly, again, I, I think that is crossing um, certain lines that should not be crossed. Um, and I will absolutely challenge that with the joint powers agreement if it goes there. The second, so I would just amend it to say, you know, we're only talking about uh, internal committees for this motion. Um, and secondly, I, I got plenty more to discuss if um, you will um, permit the reading of the various letters of support from community members and other leaders. So we've been here since uh, seven. Um, and there have been several opportunities uh, for, again, to go through this, this process uh, for communication with, with uh, not only with the board, but the public at large as well. Um, I would recommend that you submit uh, those letters um, to uh, this process so that they will be on the record versus uh, in your hand. And at this time, we will um, determine no. Mr. Mr. Sai has proposed an amendment to the current uh, motion to exclude Silicon Valley career technical education uh, from the motion. And uh, I believe that he said that he was conceding or yeah, conceding the assignments as far as the school sites in his uh, amendment. Is that accurate? Um, President Norwood, um, I don't know, I mean, is this allowed? I mean, this is about him and I'm not changing my motion. We have a, a motion and a second. Okay. And we have a, and then there is, I need a little bit of help with procedural here. There is a motion and a second, there's a discussion, and then there is a, suggested amendment to the motion on the table is that is that is that um is that valid superintendent uh normally yes it is valid but i think we need to double check the censure board policy to read again so scott if you would put the board policy uh the censure policy up on procedures Sure, let me. Uh, I'm not sure if the person who is being censored uh, has a role in the boat. Okay, hold on one sec. Let me. So, just to confirm, Board Member Yip Chuan, Vice President Xi, made the motion and Board Clerk Leanne made the second. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Well, well while you're looking that up, um, I'm going to keep reading some of these letters um, to make best use of the time. Um, and this, I'm doing this as part of discussion. Um, to we are. We if, if you would be so kind um, to allow um, this part of the process to confirm um, the the inquiry that I had about procedure. So item three says any motion to censure will be effective upon three affirmative votes of the voting board members. The board member who is subject to the censure motion shall not 
however be permitted to vote on the motion and his or her vote shall not be counted in calculating the simple majority. So it says he's unable to vote, but it doesn't say that he's not able to, upon the introduction, require an effort to avoid it. So in, in, in my reading, um, it says that he's um, unable to vote uh, on the motion. If he's not allowed to vote on his motion, should he not be allowed to modify the motion as well? And I think that's where the process comes in. I'm, I'm make, making an amendment. Can, There's can, nothing in here that says I can't make an amendment. That's where I believe the process comes in, in terms of his ability to request an amendment and that, that amendment can be um, approved uh, um, or not. Now, is the process that, since Mr. Sai has made an amendment, do we vote on his amendment or his recommended amendment? Um, and then if that, and then if that, if that moves forward, then we have a decision on action. And then if that does not move forward, um, does that present the opportunity to go back to the original uh, motion or do we re-motion again? Well, you oh, could, you know. oh. go ahead. Oh, um, Mr. Sai has made, I'm sorry, go ahead, Superintendent. I was gonna say you could um, ask if there's a motion to accept the amendment as you would in any other case and then proceed from there. Right. So the next step is that, um, right. Wait, isn't, isn't an am amendment needs to be accepted by the one who makes the motion and the second? So that means there needs to be a second. So, so I made the motion and an amendment needs to be accepted by the one who makes the motion. So I made the motion, I need to accept the amendment. In this case, I don't accept the amendment to my motion. Uh, with all due respect, Kelly, I don't think that's it's up to you in terms of how an amendment works. So, there, uh, so, there's, two, so there's two ways that this possibly could go, and I appreciate, and, and as we know, we're all learning here. So Kelly has a point in terms of the, the possibility of she needs to accept the um, amendment to her motion that may be procedurally correct. Um, and there also may be the possibility if there's an amendment to the motion, then in order for the motion to be amended, there needs to be a second. So, so what I'm proposing is this, it, it's like Min was saying about that language being unclear and he wanted to like split it into two separate components. Then to make it easy for the board, then you can say, okay, Component A is the internal committees. Component B is the external committees. And you can vote on that separately. So I thought the rule was an amendment needs to be accepted by the one who makes the motion and the second. Do you, do you have a Virginia link? Jordan, you're, you're on, Virginia Jordan, do we, do we have any, um, uh, we have any information on this? at this time? Yes. Robert's rules is, um, I move to amend the motion on the floor. This also requires a second. After the motion to amend is seconded, a majority vote is needed to decide whether the amendment is accepted. Then a vote is taken on the amended motion. Yes, so therefore President Norwood uh, knows that there is the amendment uh, motion on the floor. Um, then you should be seeking for the second. 
And if there's no second, then it motion dies. Yes. So I am going to be asking for a second and and with the with the caveat that I'm not I'm not saying discount the first part. I'm just asking for it to be split into two separate things because as it stands, I think uh, trying to make a whole motion touching into territory that frankly is of uh, dubious legal authority um, is going to put the entire motion in jeopardy. So for simplicity's sake, we can just split it. You know, if, you, if you're set on voting me off of the internal committees, um, you know, it seems like you outnumber me, but I'm just asking for it to be split into two separate things. And with that, I am asking for a second. Yeah, cool. So there's an amendment motion uh, on the floor. Uh, there is, as we continue the discussion, there is there is an opportunity. Uh, is there a second to the amendment of the motion? Uh, President Nori, I do see two two hands raised. So I, I would love to hear the public comments before awesome. moving forward with any. Thank you for the our motion. Thank you. Um, uh, President Norwood, the hands that were raised were um, members of the public who already made a comment on this item and part of our, um, is that one individual gets one comment per item, but I can certainly, it's, it's all on you, President Norwood, whatever you'd like to do. Yes, I'll open the floor for public comment. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, we are going to go to, well, now there's just one hand raised, um, Jacqueline Romero. We're going to enable your audio and you will have two minutes to make your public comment. I've been sitting here um, listening to everything um, that you guys are all sharing. And I just want to say I'm really um, disheartened that this is actually going on still. Um, I left, went to another board meeting and came back. Um, you know, I, I just want to put this in, in your mind as a possibility. Um, does the consequence that is being brought forward fit the crime? I know there's no crime per se, just his actions, but his actions were based upon his beliefs. You all have taken actions based upon your beliefs and you haven't been censured. And I just want to say, and you know who you are, um, several on several occasions, um, there's been things done that maybe shouldn't have been done. Um, and so again, just... Does this consequence of removing uh, Mr. Sai from all of those board positions fit the crime of, of what he's being accused of? So that's just all I wanna say. And I hope that you guys can make a decision to do what's best for the community and not make an emotional decision. Because as we know, when emotions goes up, intelligence goes down and we need to remain calm and composed and make the best decision for the community. Maybe give Mr. Sai three months do something that shows that you are looking at the big picture, not just this one. Um, it's not one, obviously there's a lot of issues that Mrs. Yip brought forward. Um, but I know that there's times where we don't agree with one another. And Mr. Norwood, as you said, sometimes you have to agree to disagree on how people say things. Um, we all have our own way of communicating and we've been taught different ways of communicating. You are very good at communicating, Mr. Norwood. I'll just give you that. <laughs> but not all of us are groomed as you are. So I just wanna say, just keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ja Jacqueline. And um, that was the only hand raised at this time. The other um, person does not have a hand raised at this time. Okay, thank you, Scott. We have um, a, from board member Sai, we have a request to amend the motion. Is there a second? We do not have a second. The, um, the amendment 
to the motion uh, does not move forward. The original motion continues. We have a motion, we have a second. We have a roll call vote for the, and that roll call vote includes board member, Vice President Yip Chuan, Board Clerk Lien, Board Member No, and Board President Chris Norwood. Uh, Mr. Norwood, I still like, have some things I'd like to bring up for discussion to put it into the record because I think this does need to be heard by the public. Mr. Sai. I have, I'll read four more letters. Mr. Sai. So there, there is a definite time bound on this. M Mr. Sai. I respectfully request that you recognize that not only do we have our board members here, but we also have our uh, executive cabinet and superintendent here as well as, as, well as our student board rep. Um, I ask that you uh, be mindful of the, the time and the, the commitment of all of them as you consider what other information that you would like to share that you prioritize uh, what is the most pertinent um, of those four letters. And we proceed with one of them instead of the four so that we may be able to move forward. May you honor that? Are you willing to honor that request? Uh, these are already the, the prioritized letters. Are you willing to honor the request of one letter versus four now that we have a motion, we have a second, we had um, an amended motion that did not uh, obtain a second. And we are, and I believe that the other board members are prepared to vote. Um, are you willing to honor the, the re additional reading of one letter? Okay, if you're only gonna give me one, I'll take it. Um, and uh, th just for the audience, if you need to go, um, I'm not. I'm not going to say you have to stay here, but I do do believe this is uh, people should see um, what their government is doing. Uh, so I'll read this letter um, to whom it may concern. I am writing this letter on behalf of board member Michael Tsai. Uh, the board is contemplating censuring him because he spoke out about the violation of wage and hour law that involves students volunteering for for-profit companies for no pay. It is more important than ever during the pandemic to protect workers and youth from being exploited in a time of economic desperation for so many. The recent proposal to use students' community service hours as unpaid labor for for-profit businesses violates state and federal law. The FLSA, prevents volunteering for for-profit organizations. The result is the same under state law. The FLSA defines work very broadly as simply to suffer or permit to work. Under these two definitions, volunteers partnering with a for-profit company and not for a public agency or other civic or charitable group are employees. In fact, an interpretive memorandum from the DOL makes it clear that most workers regardless of how titled, are employees. It also talks specifically about the FLSA's definition of employee and work being broad enough to include volunteers who provide labor to employers. The DOL has issued two opinion letters addressing the use of volunteers offering services to for-profit organizations. Notably, in both cases, the volunteers requested to volunteer with a for-profit company as part of a fundraiser for their civic group. Volunteers who provide services to for-profit organization in exchange for donations to group are employees in the first opinion letter. The DOL found that members of church groups and nonprofit community groups who offered volunteers to do gift wrapping for a mail order company in exchange for donations to the group were employees. The DOL stated that the services would not in themselves contribute to community or religious programs. Instead, the services are going to a profit seeking company and it makes no difference that the groups have agreed that payment should go to their community organizations or churches. Two, volunteers who work for tips for their organization are employees in the second opinion letter. The DOL 
found that student beggars who worked at a grocery store in exchange for tips that were given to their school organizations were employees of the grocery store. The DOL again stated that it does not matter that the students indicated a desire that payment of the tips they received in exchange for performing their services for the supermarket should go to their particular community organizations. Board member Tsai was the only person who spoke out against the proposal. He deserves to be applauded for doing so, yet he is being censured. It appears this censure may constitute retaliation against board member Tsai because he spoke up for the students against exploitation. Board member Tsai has set an example of courageous leadership in standing up for students against exploitation. He should not be censured. Sincerely, Ruth Silver Taub, supervising attorney, workers' rights, Catherine and George Alexander Community Law Center, Santa Clara University. Thank you. That's one letter. Thank you. And it, it, we have a motion. We have a second. Roll call vote. Board member, no. Yes. Board clerk, Han Lian. Yes. Board member, board vice president, Yip Chuan. Yes. Board member Norwood, no. Let the record state that the, the, the motion to remove board member Sai from committees um, and for school side assignments and internal and external committees has passed by a vote of three to one. Um, President Norwood, I, I hate to interject. Uh, we do have a hand raised, but I know it's after the vote and let, let let the hand let him talk or no yeah okay. actually the hand is down now okay up oh, it's back up <laughs> and i'm sorry um this pan uh, this pandemic and not being in person makes us really challenging to make sure that we're we're able to function properly i look forward to the days that we can get back to more consistent practices Agreed, agreed. Um, so we're gonna Scott, you muted. We're gonna uh, enable um, the audio for Joseph Weinstein uh, and he'll have two minutes to speak. And now his hand is I think there's that he might be having some computer issues or something because the hand keeps going. No, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I'd like to make a couple points. First of all, the letter from the attorney is totally invalid because she didn't include the fact that it our students are getting nothing in return. They're not getting tips. They're not getting paid. All they're doing is getting process of education and there's numerous legal precedents. Second thing is that he is not being censured because of his issues just with Kelly. He's being censured because of the vote because he doesn't attend meetings as people have attested to today. He shows up late at meetings uh, as people have attested to today. And thirdly, everybody's concerned about him representing, I'm really glad the vote went the way it is because I wanna quote from an email that he sent out to the community on January 2nd of this year. And in this letter or this email that he sent out, which he also asked to be a fundraiser, he says, and I quote, in the last two years, I've seen a lot of things, some good, some bad, some ugly. I'm very proud to have led the transition to online learning. Now, if the public who's listening isn't concerned about the fact that you've got a board member who's basically said that Cheryl Jordan 
wasn't the one along with our union leaders who led to online learning, the teachers and everybody else for a board member to take credit for this and you want him going out in public. And then final thing is the thing with Metro Ed is totally invalid if our school district removes him from the position. Metro Ed has got nothing to say with, with who we send to represent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and uh, there are no more hands raised um, at this time. Oh, I don't know, um, up to you. Uh, again, President Norwood, um, it's someone who Understood. already spoke. And I will, I will um, because I've honored, I, I honored the previous speaker. I would also ask the, the public that we are now, um, we, the action item is now concluded and that we also be mindful of the time of the staff members and we will allow uh, the speaker to speak. And at that point, I would like to be prepared to adjourn. Okay, uh, um, Victor San Vicente, we've enabled your audio and you have two minutes. Take yourself off of mute. Yeah, I'd like to echo everything that Joseph Weinstein said because everything that Joseph said is completely true. And he disrespected our Chamber of Commerce because nothing that he said about his Chamber of Commerce was true. And it, he left an indelible mark on our Chamber, which has to be raised. And he has to, he has to apologize for it publicly and in all media, uh, because whatever he said was, was, was false and, and derogative to our our Chamber of Commerce. And I, I support everything that, that, that this uh, committee has done. And I support everything that our previous speaker, Joseph Weinstein has said. That's all I have to say. Thank you. And with that said, um, this, this as, as I prepare to adjourn the board meeting, I like to state that we have to continue to find ways to communicate. We have to, we have to continue to um, respect the differences and find common language so that we can move forward. We can do this work in a very civilized manner without accusations, without pointing fingers, without blame. Uh, we can. And um, with that said, I want to thank everyone for their service. I want to thank everyone for uh, their taking a part, as we stated in the very beginning, this civic engagement, um, executive cabinet, and superintendent. Thank you for uh, being here. While we understand that this is not necessarily the business of the school district in the traditional way, as elected officials, again, as governance standards dictate, we have to do this in public. So, and. Um, although it was not perfect, uh, we did our best and we will continue to do our best and work through the differences that we have on behalf of Melpitas Unified School District, the families and the children we serve. And with that said, meeting- well, President um, Norwood, can I, can I um, request something that we add um, the amendments to motion procedure to agenda for future discussion, um, especially on censure? Um, what was the request to, uh, for yeah, request? To, to add amendments to motion procedures to our agenda for future discussion, especially on censure? Okay, so um, yes, we that, that can definitely be done. That can be made, uh, that request can be made to the superintendent um, to be agendized um, at a point in the future. I believe that that should also be a part of our, our board retreat, as well as the discussion of our protocols moving forward. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, um, I would, would like to give a message to the staff. Um, I understand uh, you were brought here when I know you've been incredibly busy preparing for the school reopening. Uh, you may have been told by some others trying to say, oh, this is Michael's fault that you're being dragged out here. And I, I would just ask you to, to think about, take a step back and think about this carefully that, you know, I didn't want to be here. Who really was it that initiated this um, so-called process? 
Mr. Sai, um, if you would like, to, if Mr. Sai, if you would like to have an item agendized, um, if you would like to, um, at your leisure, um, communicate um, through the processes that we have in place, um, I would ask you respectfully uh, to do so. Um, we are preparing um, to adjourn. I'm going to get it out there. If you if you want to leave, um, you can leave. But I think for all the people who are here, they deserve to hear what the community is saying, and so, it will be heard. So if at this time, leave, so at this time, um, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All right. So for um, I'm going to continue reading the voices from the community. Um, 